and welcome back to the squad cast uh caboose got lost so he will be back in a minute <laughs> but in the meantime we're gonna start uh discussing the uh best mmo rpgs coming in 2021 and beyond um ophelia i know you're a huge fan of I MMO am. RPGs and Caboose came right in time because he's My like bad. MMO RPGs. <laughs> <laughs> I had to run and get some water. It was a bit of an obstacle course. <laughs> he was like, "Oh, I need to hear more." So, uh, give us the rundown on what we could expect. Oh uh, well, we're gonna have pretty, pretty good MMO RPGs coming up this year. Uh, it's been a while since we had any good ones, but this is looking good. Well, I think the most popular one, well, popular, famous one, but unpopular at the same time, is New World by Amazon Games. Mm -hmm. Well, famous because Amazon. But first reviews were not that great. So, mm -hmm. but well, it's a big one coming out this year. So is it um, big because of Amazon? Or like, are there some things that that game is doing that's like making people in the community hopeful? Yeah, like, it's just Amazon, it's just Amazon. Yeah, let's say New World and Hopeful don't really go well together, but, well, who knows? <laughs> I mean, right, we could have a good fair. surprise and, like, but it doesn't seem groundbreaking. I mean, it kind of looks like many, many, many other RPGs we saw. Mm. So I don't think it would be groundbreaking or anything, but, well, mm. Amazon can surprise us, I guess, so finger crossed. We're going to have to check All out right. the years for that. But yeah, we're going to hope for that. But now there's going to have some other ones who look a bit more original. Um, so you have uh, Lost Ark. Maybe you heard about it because it's already available in South Korea and Russia. Right. But it's finally coming to North America. And well, there's an English version, so anyone can just play it, even if you're not in North America. And, That's the Smilegate yeah. one, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. a really good one because, oh, well, it? actually, yeah, it's an MMORPG, but without a focus system, so you don't have a target. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of innovative with that. Cool. So, yeah, I can wait to try it, but I'm not in South Korea yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, this year. Um, yeah, no, you, and no, for once, uh, the one I really, really want to try, I don't know if you heard about this one, it's Ashes of Creation. It's no. basically just like any other MMORPG, but whatever you do in game impacts the environment you, you live in. Like, let's say you get in the forest and kill, I don't know, every wolf you get to see. Then the time by time, the area will change. Like you do quest, it will build a little camp, village, town, and then a huge city. And it's just up to players to choose where they want to quest so to see what they want to develop and okay. i think that could make a great great thing in mmorpgs like, are there any other games that are doing something similar to that right now because i'm not familiar with the mmorpg community not really in mmorpgs you have some games like uh, echo who does that mm -hmm. it's basically you have a job and you build stuff and you trade with others and but that's not and then MMORPG is like 30, 40 people max. So mm. at this scale, I think it's pretty new. And I don't know how it's going to go because, well, it can go either way because if people don't get involved, then nothing will happen. And mm. if everybody does it, then it's all the same. Right. But I'm curious to see where it goes. Do you guys have your eyes on any MMORPG? I'm not sure that's kind of your cup of tea, but do you have eyes on something? Uh, MMORPGs are definitely, like, they're really outside of my wheelhouse. But um, some of the ones that you had mentioned there, I want to look into. Especially, like, COVID times, I'm just, like, I have nothing but time. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So, like, if they're, the, you know, Mass Effect's coming up, the trilogy, like, I'm definitely going to try that out. And and any of the games that you listed there, I'd be willing to try out just to see and introduce myself to the genre. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah. Mm. They're, they're cool ones. Mm, it, yeah. It's not always medieval fantasy because you have a uh, steampunk one coming out. It's called... called mm -hmm. Cold punk and yep. it's steam like basically it's like Diablo go steampunk with friends. Okay. And oh cool, that's cool. Yeah, I think you could like it. It's you just have to find your one and 
go for that niche. Your niche. Yeah. Mm. See, but that's the thing. Like, I find MMORPGs, they just are so intimidating because it seems like it takes so much time out of your day, which, you know, gaming does take a lot of time. But like I've mentioned, and I'll continue to mention, COD is that game for me right now. Oh, oh gosh. Really (laughs) covers every topic today. (laughs) Death Stranding. Nudge. Give me the game, man. Just let me love it. Um, No, but... (laughs) Yes, Death Stranding is one of them, but COD takes up a lot of my time, right? right? So that's kind of like the shooters, the genre I go to. When I look at MMORPGs, although I do enjoy RPGs, MMORPGs, it's just like, obviously massive, right? <laughs> Huge. Yeah. Um, on a scale where it's just a lot of time, I feel like you have to dedicate. I don't know where to start necessarily. Am I picking the right one? Because if I pick this one, I'm going to be stuck with it because I don't want to start something and then like cancel out after level like 50 you know (laughs) so so it's very intimidating for me to kind of get into that genre yeah i think yeah i'm i'm kind of right there with you like mmos typically scare the ever-loving hell out of me just thinking about how much time i need to invest into this game so it's like for me because i like review a lot of games or i create a lot of content regarding games like I'm very rarely on a specific game for more than maybe two weeks at maximum. And just thinking about, okay, well, I'm going to, for instance, New World is probably like the the one I've been keeping the most eye on just because it's intriguing to me. But just thinking like, okay, there are people going to be spending 200 plus hours into this, investing a lot of time. I'm only going to be there for two weeks and then maybe a break comes up and I'm like, I want to jump back into New World. Wow, what's going on? Like Mm -hmm. Like that's the problem with some of these more persistent games is that you stop the world keeps going and then once you drop back in you got to play catch up and that that just scares me yeah i I agree that's the most daunting part about it too is that it's like this constantly like ongoing thing Mm -hmm. um which is a cool concept like there's part of that part of me is like that's actually really exciting and super fun but part of me is like oh god like how much how many hours do i gotta sink (laughs) into these games you know yeah yeah, but I think it's I just more like... intimidating than it is. Yeah. Sure. Mm. Because, well, once you, you feel... get into it, it's not that. Okay. Yeah. Do you? Okay, feel... that's fair. When you started playing MMORPGs, did you start playing with friends initially, or did you find friends through playing? I started I feel at 10 like if with I my were... dad. <laughs> So my friend, father put me on World of Warcraft oh, and he said, now you get with it. And I was so terrified by wolves because there are wolves in World of yeah. Warcraft. And I was standing, I was creeping out. No, I just think that it's just scary at first because you think of MMORPGs are like, you want to get to the high level, you have to play every day. But if, right. you, if you just want to mm-hmm. chill in your corner just with friends, it's kind of the same. I mean... You could get impressed by games like, I don't know, Death Stranding or Cyberpunk and like, oh, I have to play 100 hours alone somewhere and plug it. But with MMOs, you can just play and watch a series in the same time. You don't have to have the same focus you do on other kinds of games. So I just think that it's kind of like some people play mobile game watching TV Mm -hmm. or you can play MMOs watching TV, but I could not play I know Death Stranding watching TV, like I can't, my brain can't focus. Yeah. So it's just and a different I, style. And it might just be like a me problem, but thinking about sinking like a hundred hours into Death Stranding or into Cyberpunk seems a lot more obtainable to me because I know that it's on my time. Like the next time I jump into Cyberpunk, for instance, I know I still have those same quests just waiting for me. Jumping into like New World or even World of Warcraft, a game confession i've never played world of warcraft even across like all these ages like you can take away my my gamer card if you want but (laughs) just thinking about jumping in there and then having friends already complete other quests and then be like okay well i don't want to bother you guys and ask you guys to help me with this or that like i just like it maybe it's even ocd or something but i just like knowing that the next time i come into it i can go in with a game plan and know exactly what my next thing is Mm. do you know what though do you think it's part of like that common misconception of mmorpgs being so intimidating because you have to dedicate all that time may come from like our experiences like more console pc gamers ha- playing games that are more adventure based that have that end game like you're you're mm. playing towards mm-hmm. the end of the story yeah. right you know okay although i put in you know 
20 hours, I have another 20 to go to complete the game. And then, you know, if I want to spend more time, I can do that with side missions, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That was, that, was that was for like my fellow like oh. you know MMO RPG noobs. Like, it, do you guys feel like maybe that's probably why we're so intimidated? I I one hundred percent think so. I think if like we took that that bold step into an MMO RPG and kind of just started getting into it, it would probably feel a lot less intimidating. But it's just getting over that that hurdle. Mm. And yeah, I, exactly. I'm just not there yet. Like I, I'm not prepared. <laughs> You even, cannot even make RPG, that commitment. Yeah. Even RPGs to a certain extent were like pretty daunting to me. Like going into something like Cyberpunk where I was even trying to play Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It's like, oh my God, there is like so much. Mm. Now, granted, I got into Cyberpunk a little bit, bugs aside. Like I was able to kind of go through it and play through it. Um, but I probably didn't even do that as efficiently as someone who is like as dedicated or a hardcore RPG fan would. You know, so now and now I know games like Gotham Knights coming out this year and that's going to be an RPG. So like that'll probably be kind of my first step into that that genre and really mm -hmm. trying to focus in on creating the best build for my characters and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I'm mm -hmm. excited. I'm excited for it. Um, but yeah, even like to an extent, RPGs give me that daunting feeling of like, oh, my God, this is a little overwhelming. So when you add the MMO aspect to it. It's like it's it is intimidating, but again, I I'm always willing to try out some some new games. It's yeah. it's another genre, basically, like playing sports game or adventures game. It's not the same, and you don't have the same feeling. And it's kind of the same with MMOs. You don't play to finish the game. You just play mm. to be with your friends. And right. when, and when you are talking about quest and not wanting to bother friends. You don't really, because the only time you need other people is to do dungeons or raids, and right. you can play with anyone. So you can play MMO or as just a single game. You don't mm. have to be social, but mm. you can if you want to. And that's the addictive part, because yeah. it's basically like launching Steam or PlayStation and seeing your friends online, sure. but they're already playing your game with you yeah. right now. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's kind of the... You're not looking for the same thing. You're not looking for the story or, well, some do have great stories like Final Fantasy, but that's not the main thing to be looking for. Yeah. Mm. And I think that's yeah, a hurdle it too. It goes back to... But Sorry, Camille, go ahead. I think that's the main hurdle too. Like I think of why I play COD so much and it, because it's easy to just drop in and, you know, get into a party with my friends. Even like if I'm taking an hour break from say cleaning, I could just jump into a COD match and then jump out and then be like, all right, peace guys. Like I'm not ruining their experience too much because they'll probably just hop into a trio or something like that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, whereas like an MMORPG, I'm like, okay, I want this experience, but then I need friends who play this MMORPG to like feel like it. I would play it more for the social aspect, knowing like the type of person I am to play with my friends. That's why I would play it more. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, the fear of falling behind. I think like that's the hardest part. I need to get over that hurdle of like it is easy to jump into an MMORPG. Like just set that, you know, mindset that I could do it. Yeah. 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 And you, you're only falling behind if you aim for the highest spot. Like, right. if you want to perform. Right. If you're just a casual player who wants to do a dungeon or two or just raiding, you don't really care because extensions come out, like, every two years mm -hmm. on average for an MMO. So before falling behind, well, you have two years of not playing. So, of course, you'll be falling okay. behind. So that's Do we consider cool. Destiny an MMO RPG? I would think so. I would. Yeah. Because I get I guess yeah. I'm into one. I yeah. guess I yeah. have okay, one. okay. Oh no. Okay. So there's there's like oh, that Ophelia's like, no, that doesn't that count. I, like she <laughs> I feel like her inner MMORPG count. nerd is like hurting. She's like, no. But like the thing no, is, it is it is multiplayer. It is. The thing the thing is about Destiny though, is that like that's that's what I'll do is like I'll play I'll, I won't necessarily max out my character, but I'll try out all the new activities and then I kind of leave it alone until mm -hmm. there's a new expansion or brand new content mm -hmm. to check out again. Like that's kind of been my my time with Destiny 2 and I've pretty much repeated that over however many years since Destiny 1. So, I mean, if we consider that an MMORPG, Bungie says that it is, I think, yeah, if I remember it, correctly. It but I know like some people who play that specific genre of games are like, well, 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so like if it's not that's fine but like if, if people consider it to be then i guess that's the one i have under my belt that's it yeah, it yeah. follows the model. I mean, MMORPGs are basically you buy the game one time and yeah. you just up upgrade it, but you never buy it again. You have DLCs, you have, well, World of Warcraft Classic went out. Well, I was 10, so I'm obviously not 10 anymore. But mm. so, and you don't need to buy another game to continue the story. And that's what they do in Destiny. So, yeah, I assume it's kind of similar. Yeah, to kind of uh, Caboose's point, I think, yeah, there is that. I don't want to call it like a mid-tier, but almost kind of like mid-tier where you have your destinies, your, I would even put division in there or something that, yeah. is, that is persistent and does have those multiplayer qualities. Those ones I can find myself getting behind just yeah. because of, you can have that, those time commitments. And then also, I don't know if this is going to be true across the whole board, but with destiny specifically, if you, if you walk away from that game and the next expansion comes out, they have that kind of like bump up where they're just like, okay, we're yeah. just gonna we're just gonna let you level up to where everyone is at this point, so that way you can just continue playing this new content with all your friends and not have to worry about. Yeah, that. it's a very I love like, that. very loose MMORPG. Exactly, you know? and that makes it so much more accessible. I don't know if like New World or any of these other like hardcore ones do something similar, but that makes it more accessible to someone like yeah. me, anyways. Yeah, I agree. What Warcraft does, but yeah. well, you have to pay because it's Blizzard. Right. But I didn't know about the upcoming ones because, well, upcoming. So sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I guess we'll see. Sure. Yeah. Um, we'll have, and we'll also have to see if we maybe next time Ophelia, when you're on, if we actually hop into an MMO proper RPG. I get to do that. Um, okay. All right. Okay. We'll have to set that up then.